Did you ever see the end of vaudeville? I mean, I'm trying to see where the, you know, the very end of vaudeville and music hall, I guess it was in burlesque in Toronto. Burlesque in Toronto in the 60s oh, was oh. the tail end of vaudeville and oh, music hall. Oh, be still my heart. I mean, half of my Toronto education was at the old casino. The one casino on and Victory. Victory was on Spadina. That's right, Spadina Ca and Dundas? Yeah, Spadina. Spadina, and the casino was across from the old city hall. From across from the old, and it was the big one for and me. And that's uh, where the new city hall is now. Mm. That was the big casino, and that was a... Uh, no, the casino theater was just across from the old city hall. I mean, it's across, south, south side. One balcony, two balconies, casino. Maybe. I, I sat up at the raincoat a lot, up in the front watching this. <laughs> <laughs> These, Big organ? Huh? Big organ? Oh, Lily, Lily St. Cyr. Sally and uh, Lily St. Cyr danced there. You, oh, you must look up Lily St. Cyr. She was huge, huge. And you were seeing burlesque or you were seeing? I was seeing burlesque. I was seeing uh, uh, wonderful gifts, uh, you know, guest stars, terrific players that would come through and uh, do their thing. Now and then they would add a small movie, you know. I would go up and spend forever at the casino. And there was a fellow called Chuck Gregory and his dancing girls. Chuck Gregory's dancing girls. The girls came out. They didn't resemble each other in the slightest. <laughs> and they, they would come out. Is this of interest to you? Yeah. And they would, they would come out. And uh, one of them was Kitty Cat McDonald. Very pretty girl, but had a head problem. Her head was slightly <laughs> on one side. She was the wife of Mick, Mickey McDonald, public enemy number one. And he forced Chuck Gregory to use her. So Kitty Cat was in there, and they were all dancing along, and they would come in. And he had a little song to sing. Would you like to hear it? Yes. Uh, little girl, you're the one girl for me, little girl. You're as sweet as can be, just one look at you meant love from the start. And oh, what a thrill came into my heart, little girl. With your cute little ways, I am yours. Till the end of my days and this great big world will be divine, little girl, when you're mine, oh, mine. There. Fantastic. And now, how did I remember those words? And this is, we're, because we're talking, I don't know anything of any use. We're talking early 50s? When were you at the casino? Yeah. I arrived in Toronto first. I was 17. I uh, stepped at a Union Station. The Royal York was the second tallest building, and uh, that was the that was my entrance into. And you had a rooming house to go to. You had family to go to. Where no, did you go? no one to go to. I had friends from Newfoundland who had left before I had, and this was six months before Confederation, the second one, <laughs> not the first one. And uh, so we're in 1948, 49. Yeah. Yeah. I d and I had six jobs in six weeks, and doing what? Different things. Different things. Okay, I worked at a. Uh, I worked for a. Uh, I hope none of these people are still with us. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I worked for uh, an insulating company, which had a truck, a tube, a machine, and a tube that went up into the attics and places and whatever and just <laughs> filled them up with insulating material. And uh, I had just come from Newfoundland and I was standing on the, I was a bit late arriving. And there was one fellow stationed halfway up the ladder and his brother was in the attic, curled up in a ball with the tube ready to, to shoot. And the, as I stepped into the cave running up, uh, the fellow in the, uh, uh, in the secondary position said, uh, where were you? I said, oh, I'm late, I'm sorry. He said, uh, well, he's up there now. My brother's up there now. Just uh, turn on the thing. You know. So I went into the truck and he said, um, hurry up, you dumb noofie. And I went, Shh, and I took off, I ran. Now, who knows what happened to the man in the attic? We're talking here about 
a lot of insulating material that might have come out and filled up all the cracks. So <laughs> I have no idea. But anyway, they never came to call. They just fired me. So I had a number of those. And to be a young Newfie in Toronto in 1948, was that? was a little chancy. Chancy, where according to other Newfoundlanders that had stayed, neighbors of mine or whatever, said, what's it like? Or, you know, it was still fairly, you know, it was not, it was not happening all that much, I suppose. But and were you into painting then? Into what? Painting. Uh, sketching. Right. So this is before acting. This is before... Yeah, everything. The, the, the dance teaching. Yes. And uh, a fr somebody... Another actor in town, and I must have done the same thing, but anyway, it was almost a copy, and I remember when I heard the story, I had said the same thing to this man at the unemployment office, and he said, uh, what do you do? And I said, I'm an actor. I'd never acted, you know, and he said, well, you can't get your work as actor. What else? What did you do before that? I said, I was a shepherd. And they said, <laughs> Shepherd? No sheep in Toronto. <laughs> uh, you have to get me work as an actor then, I said. So that was the, that was arriving in Toronto. My God. <laughs> I, said, I don't know where I had. I think part of the, the chutzpah came from the fact that I had cleats on my boots. In those days, you know, if you were walking around and oh, you could be heard. Oh, you mean the, the little metal plates That's on the right. heels that went click, 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 click. 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 I thought I was the smartest thing yeah. ever. Wow. And I brought those cleated boots into every office I went in. I've heard about the casino. Yeah. And it's a big theater missing from our past that it was ripped down oh. to do whatever. Yes. And s you saw comedians. Uh, so a, a performance there would be the dancing girls, would be a comedian, would be a small film. That's right. A sort of couple of comics, you know. And these May maybe a short film, only when they had them. And these comics would be on a touring circuit of comics coming through Toronto? Yes, it was, you know, a couple of guys meeting in the middle of the stage, right. chatting up like Fields and so on, you know, that kind of old old thing. And know. was it tacky? Burns and Allen never did it. Was, right. was it tacky? Yeah. Just a touch. <laughs> Just a touch tacky, I thought. And would the comics uh, but, do a comic turn and then sing a song or would the girls Sometimes, but for the most part they just told jokes and walked up and looked at girls from the side and whatever, you know. Uh, you'd get some wonderful acts, which is why truly I went there. I didn't go to see Chuck Gregory's Dancing Girls. I went to see um, people like Josh White on the guitar. Right. Wonderful, wonderful uh, black entertainment coming up from the States. Sammy Davis Jr. played one of his uh, early gigs there. And so people of that nature were coming through. And I, I knew Josh White's music so well, and he was superb. And was there an orchestra in the pit? No. Was there oh, organ? there was something in the pit for the girls, yes. Right. You know, you know. Well, a couple I'm of not sure how much a, right. now. Not sure how much now. But it was a place we'd go. And was it, would it be full? Would it be half full? Was it? Oh, uh, half. Two thirds, maybe, you know, depending. Respectable middle class people or uh, people who were just in? Not so, well, yes, yes, I think so, you know. We were coming from the frat house, Perry and I. We'd go down on Saturdays, you know. And if you'd seen the show, you'd go over to the Victory on Spadina. Right. I was over in China in the, in the 70s, and I sat at a table with Sir Run Run Shaw. Sir Run Run Shaw was the man who was responsible for Bruce Lee and owned the movie company in Hong Kong. And I was at the consulate's house and I sat opposite Sir Run Run Shaw. And he was saying, how was the victory? He owned it, apparently. So that was interesting. And what was the victory like compared to the other? Uh, I think fairly, fairly equal stuff, yeah, fairly equal. The, uh, I have a funny feeling that maybe it had uh, started before the casino, and the casino right. sort of came in a bit later. And that kind of burlesque that was going on, was it raunchy burlesque, or was it no. clean burlesque, or...? No, not so much. I mean, you know, uh, Sally Rand would do the bubble, her famous bubble dance. Um, Lily St. Cyr would take a bath. 
but done in ways that, you know, you had to be extremely close to the stage. Uh, otherwise, it. <laughs> <laughs> and when Lily Sincere took a bath, did she take a bath? I, uh, I no. I think these were f foamy things they got from Eaton's or something. You know, right, some right. sort of. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm not sure. No, when I don't. When Lily think Sincere is taking a bath, is she singing? She is she talking, or is the orchestra playing, or how? Orchestra playing. So she made it into a dance. You know, she'd get in and out of the tub a lot, and uh, not a lot to it, but it was known as the famous tub. You know, Lily St. Cyr. She was mainly known in uh, Montreal, so she would go back there and, uh, and uh, <laughs> wreak, you know, uh, go back and wreak, wreak havoc and interest in uh, the Montrealers. And would the morality uh, police be around at all? Because I remember uh, late 60s, they closed down Futs and. Not so much. So would they, was there any kind no. of. No, no sign of that. Or? No sign of that. When I arrived, by the way, uh, the first news item at CBC, spelled out by Lauren Green at the time, was the escape from Don Jail of Edwin Alonso Boyd. So the Boyd gang was quite in evidence at that time. Uh, but otherwise, you didn't hear of anything in good, Toronto the Good. You know, you had, uh, I rem remember there was a shooting on Lansdowne and people were kind of astonished and very interested in that. Hmm. But no, this was, not, uh, this was not a daily thing, not in the big sense. So that something like Boyd would have been lost in a larger criminal element. But no, this was, um, uh, so he stood out as being number one, you know, sort of thing.